yes, I'm sitting on the floor of my living room while there are obviously couches around me, but you know, sometimes sitting on the floor is just more cozy and inviting feeling. So don't judge me. Hello, and welcome to my very first ever reread review. Woohoo! Right now, there is a winter storm. There is snow, and there is ice, and freezing rain, and power outages. So, as I am stuck indoors and trying to conserve electricity, I have been reading a ton. I recently just, well, I very recently, as in like yesterday, today, and the day before, reread a series that I have not read since high school, which is Jennifer L. Armentrout's Dark Elements series. I really enjoy this author in general. I think at this point I had read her her Lux series and I think it's the Covenant series before I read the Dark Elements series. Liked those other ones and was very excited to continue on with her writing. But again, I haven't read them since high school, so I was curious to revisit them and see if my opinions may have changed, if it was still an enjoyable read. Just curious to see if it has held up over the course of time. There are worse ways for me to use my time right about now than just getting to reread books that I'm pretty sure I would enjoy. So let's get to it. Okay, so I wanna start off by talking about what I remember before I read the series. There will be spoilers. I'm going to try to keep the beginning pretty spoiler free. Spo wow. I'm going to try and keep the beginning pretty spoiler free. There we go. Finally got the words out. <laughs> Talking is difficult, you guys. I remembered that the series was going to follow a girl named Layla and that the world that they were in has demons, angels, alphas, which I think are a different sect of heavenly being than angels and demon. Wait, did I say demons? I think I said demons. Demons, angels slash alphas, and gargoyles. The gargoyles in this series are called wardens, and they are basically demon hunters. In this world, they keep the demon population down topside. The demons that are topside should not be there, so the wardens help to banish them back down below, which I'm sure you can imagine where that is. There's a big focus on trying to understand what good and evil is in this series, looking at how things are maybe not necessarily always just black and white, good and evil, there may be some gray area in there. Let me start by reading the back of the very first book, which is called White Hot Kiss, to kind of give a summary of the basics of what the, th the series is going to be about says, one kiss can kill. Layla just wants to be normal, fit in at school, go out on real dates, and do other typical teenager things. Trouble is, Layla is anything but normal, and her longtime crush, Zane, treats her like a little sister. Half demon, half gargoyle, Layla has abilities that no one else possesses. And even though Zane is a warden, part of the race of gargoyles tasked with hunting demons and keeping humanity safe, Layla's kiss will kill anything with a soul, including him. Enter Roth, a smart-mouthed demon who claims to know her deepest, most dangerous secrets. Though Layla knows she should stay away, it's tough when the whole soul thing isn't an issue. Trusting Roth could brand her a traitor to the Warden family that raised her and destroy her relationship with Zane. But with a violent demon uprising looming in the distance, kissing the enemy suddenly pales in comparison to the end of the world. Dun dun dun! Sorry, I'm sure that was painful to watch. That excerpt pretty much covers all that I remember from the series. I remembered who she ended up with at the end of the series, but I didn't remember most of the details that led up to that. I pretty much went into this reread of the series fairly blind, as I only really remembered the first book and not the second two, which was really fun for me. So that is it for the general bit of what the story is about. I don't think I'm going to put a spoiler warning yet. I'm going to pretty much talk about the things that the back of the book said. We're still doing okay. But basically, Layla, as the book said, is a half-demon, half-warden, and she was taken in by a clan of wardens that live in Washington, D.C. Layla has this unique ability where if she gets close, it's kind of like a Dementor, okay? Picture that from Harry Potter. When you're close to them, you can start to suck their soul out. 
She doesn't have to actually kiss somebody to take their soul, but she does get close and it kind of sucks. She sucks it in through their mouth and her mouth. That's how I pictured it at least. When she ends up having this longtime crush on the guy that she was raised with, Zane, they can never be together. She has this demonic desire. Oh, I forgot to mention. This ability that she has is demonic in nature. It comes from her demon side, not her warden side. If she gets too close to Zane, there is a possibility that she will suck his soul out and he will die. So that puts a damper on the whole relationship for sure. It is an unrequited love situation where she's into him and he pretty much looks at her like a little sister still, which is unfortunate. Yeah. The wardens are gargoyles basically. So they have a human form, which obviously it looks human but they also can shift into a creature made of stone. They resemble the gargoyles on top of all of the churches and things that you may have seen. In their warden form, they are very strong. They have wings and can fly. They have very hard and tough skin, so they are harder to hurt or kill. And they have increased healing abilities, so they heal faster than humans do. Whereas demons, there are a lot of different types of demons in this world, and they have different abilities and different ways that they like to cause trouble. So there are type of demon that is super hungry and just likes to be a glutton and eat a bunch of things, and they also have a tendency to take a little chomp on a human, and if a human is bitten by this type of demon, then that human later becomes kind of like a zombie, I think? They go crazy and start to decay, so I'm pretty sure it's like a zombie. Then there are other demons that just, if they touch something electrical, it makes the electrical thing malfunction. There's a whole bunch of different types of lower level demons, and then there's the upper level demons. There's quite the hierarchy in the demonic side of things. Upper level demons tend to have other abilities. Back on the side of good, the wardens answer to the alphas, which I first thought were angels, but just the author's version of angels. Later in the series, they mention angels, and it sounds like there's something separate. So potentially, the alphas answer to angels who answer to the guy upstairs. That's what they call him in this book. So I'm, I think that's what the hierarchies look like on both ends of it. So lower level demons, upper level demons, crown prince demon, the boss. And then on the other side, it's the Wardens, the Alphas, the Angels, and then the big guy upstairs. I hope that makes sense. But Layla, being half demon, half warden, she's the only one of her kind. She doesn't really fit in anywhere. And she is really trying to distance herself from the demon portion of her heritage because it causes her to suck people's souls out. Which I think is an understandable reason to not want to have a part of that. Layla's always trying to suppress that part, but she has this ability to tag demons where if she touches a demon that's out and about, she leaves a sort of trace on them that the wardens can see, but nobody else can. Layla can also see souls. So I guess everybody kind of has like an aura around them and it's, it's their soul. She can see their soul shining through them, which is really neat. The more pure your soul is, the lighter color it is. The purest souls, I think, are pretty blinding. And then there's some like light pinks, some light blues, some greens. And then the more sketchy you get, the more bad that you've done in this world, the darker and more dingy your soul becomes. So that was more like the browns, the reds, and then if you're really, really awful, the blacks. Wardens have pure souls. Even if they aren't the nicest creature themselves, like that individual is not very nice, they still have a pure soul which is a gift from the big guy upstairs, I guess, is what they've said. Whereas demons actually have no soul. So Le Layla, when she goes out to tag these demons, finds the ones that don't have a soul. She touches them, which will then light them up like a big beacon for the wardens to go hunt at night when they shift. This is definitely a romance-centric book. I would also say it's pretty character-driven, as far as the series as a whole is concerned, but there is still an overarching plot through the whole thing. But the main focus is the characters, the romance. 
Uh, if you enjoy morally gray books or morally gray characters, and you love romance and you like the paranormal and the supernatural, I think you'd enjoy this series as a whole. I definitely don't regret rereading it. It's a really fun read. It's not, not anything to take super serious, although, confession, I did cry at the end of the first book. So there's that. If you hate sad things, just be aware that that will probably punch you in the gut and have the second book ready to go so that you can avoid long time hurt. But the series as a whole has a pretty happy ending. Do with that what you will. There is, I'm sure you already can guess, a love triangle. So if you hate love triangles, this series may not be the one for you, but I do not hate love triangles when they are done okay, and so it was fine for me. That is it with talking about just the general picture and what the, the basics look like. I'm going to start by breaking down the book's a little bit deeper now, so if you're worried about a potential spoiler, then you may want to click away now. But if not, just hang out. I'll try to still keep things pretty general, but things may slip out. Alright, so let's talk about the world building of this series. I really liked it. The hierarchy is something that was really fascinating to me on both sides, the demonic side and the more heavenly side. I appreciated the way that the author made it not quite so cut and dry. It's not just good versus evil. There was some gray in the middle and you as the reader are learning along with the characters what that looks like in the world. Demons may not be all bad. They may be capable of compassion and they may not be trying to cause harm to people, but it's still just part of their nature to cause chaos, you know? Just because you have a pure soul doesn't mean that you are a good person and that the Wardens are capable of great evil just as much as the demons are. So I really appreciated that exploration. I, overall, I think the world building is one of the coolest aspects of this book. It was a different take on angels versus demons, that whole good and evil trope, because of the inclusion of the Warden slash gargoyles. I really like that different take on it. Another thing that I thought was just so sick was that the demons can have familiars, which I have read about familiars before in different books that cover more um, witches and things like that, but I haven't ever read of familiars being tied to demons, so that was interesting enough in itself, but these familiars are tattooed onto these upper level demons and become a part of them. They are animal familiars, for example, Roth has a few of them, Roth the demon, and they take the form of tattoos on his body, but when he wants, he can will them off his body, and then it's just a live animal creature that is sentient and has its own personality. And I just think that's so neat that the familiar is so tied to who you are that they're literally a part of you and can become a physical man manifestation in their own right. I think that's all I really need to say about the world building, so let's move to characters as a whole. Layla is mostly relatable and understandable. The feelings that she feels are very human in nature. She has depressive slumps. She feels sorry for herself. She is excited. She feels love, compassion, all the things. She also has a lot of inner turmoil as she's trying to figure out and distinguish for herself if what she's grown up hearing her whole life is the truth or if there's potentially another side to things that she hadn't considered before. She's really confronted with how the Wardens have controlled telling their version of history to her and she just believed it hook, line, and sinker. And now that she's hanging out with Roth, she's seeing that maybe there's a slightly different side and not everything that the Wardens have told her is true. So she has to really explore that and figure out what she believes for herself by experiencing the world outside of just one perspective. Roth is our main bad boy type character, and he's a demon. He is very powerful, kicks a lot of butt, takes a lot of names, and you don't want to mess with him. He's a, he's a scary dude. He has a very hard exterior and tries to show the world that he doesn't care and that he's just untouchable, but the one soft spot for him is Layla. And she changes everything for him, of course, because that's how romance books work. 
He is super sassy, super smart mouthy, and I loved the banter that Roth and Layla have with one another. But he also has those moments of where he's just very deep and emotional. So he isn't just a one-dimensional character. He has a lot of sides and we get to explore his motivations throughout the books a little bit. So I really appreciate how he helps Layla to love all the parts of her. The last main character that we're going to talk about is Zane. He is the warden that Layla grew up with and she has that unrequited crush on. Zane is a complicated character for me. I have mixed feelings, okay? He is very sweet and he just cares so much about Layla and he knows so much about her. He knows how to help her when she's having really intense soul-sucking cravings and it's never really bothered him or scared him. He's accepted her as she is because he believed that she is inherently good. Not because he necessarily accepted the demon part of her, but he just thought that the warden part of her was so strong that she would never hurt him and that she was inherently good. Does that make sense? I don't know. It's kind of hard to explain. He goes from being a big brother type role for her when she's younger to as she's older she starts to appreciate how gosh darn attractive this man is and starts to fall in love with him. Zane's father is the one that kind of took her in so it's weird. In the second book in particular we explore more of Zane and Layla and how they are together whereas the first book we're just kind of shown that he is very supportive and caring about Layla. The second book really delves more into their dynamic more than just that caring role. And here's the problem that I have with Zane is that he is so caring that he is stifling. I appreciate when somebody cares enough about you to want to protect you from things that could potentially harm you. But here's where the struggle is. Zane is so loving and protective that he just forgets that she is capable of taking care of herself. So instead of just supporting her and trying to protect her while being alongside her, he would rather just completely keep her away from the action when that's not necessarily what Layla needs. You don't want to be shoved in a box or shoved in basically a gilded cage in order to be protected. You want to have someone that's going to stand next to you and protect your back. That's what you want. Zane struggles with that balance at some points. He figures it out a bit more. He goes back and forth. So we've got two different love interests. We've got the very dangerous bad boy type and we've got that boy next door, super sweet guy, you know? So if those are your different types, you'll enjoy getting to read this and kind of decide for yourself who you like her with. I honestly am still torn, I don't know. She chose the right guy for her in the end of the series, but I don't know if personally that would have been the right guy for me. So that's a fun one to explore yourself. Oh, I forgot, yes. So in this, the humans haven't always even known that the Wardens existed. They, the Wardens came out of hiding about 10 years prior. So I guess that the reason for their coming out to the world and really not hiding in the shadows anymore was that the demonic activity on Earth was becoming so crazy that the Wardens couldn't hide themselves anymore. Humans can't know that demons exist because then they would just try to do good cheap deeds for the sake of avoiding hell and it wouldn't actually mean anything and that would impact the sanctity of free will, so to speak. That's another part of the Warden's job in the world, is to keep humanity in the dark about demons and hell and heaven. So the humans just think that the Wardens help to fight human bad guys. Which I always thought was a bit of a plot hole. Like really, would you believe that if all of a sudden gargoyles came out of nowhere and they just talked with the police? I don't know. I guess they, they portray to the world that like, oh, we helped capture this murderer or whatever. So now there's one less bad guy off on the streets to cause harm to the world. They just kind of skated over that and didn't delve into what the humans think that the Wardens do too much on a daily basis, and um, the Wardens like that. They don't deal with press, they want to stay pretty secretive so that humanity doesn't know what they really do in the world. Layla has a lot of family drama, as you can imagine, I'm sure, being half demon and half Warden. If you have a good parent and an evil parent, what does that make you? Does that make you a good person or a bad person? 
Do you get to decide for yourself? Is it nature versus nurture? How does it work? So if you enjoy that stuff, this book is very interesting. The pacing of this book was awesome. I don't think that there is anything that I would cut or change, really. It is just a fun ride. You can read it pretty quick. It isn't for younger audiences, per se. There is more mature content in it. This book explores what good and evil looks like in the world, and you couldn't really explore what evil looks like in the world without touching on some difficult subjects. So keep that in mind. Everything just moves super smooth. It's more character-driven, this series, than plot-driven. Characters are motivated by some key things that happen in the plot, so it all just works together and you're not lacking too much in any one area. The romance, again, it's a love triangle, so it's a love triangle. There are some more graphic scenes. They may not explicitly say things, that are happening, but like, you know what's going on. She like tries to be vague in how she describes it, but it's not vague enough to be appropriate for younger audiences. Let's just say it that way. I do think that the romance was pretty well developed. You understand, based off of history, why Layla might be interested in Zane, and you also understand why she might later become interested in Roth. And it's not just a cheap love triangle for the sake of a love triangle. There is conflict, there is understandable back and forth. It's so hard to talk about this without getting into too many spoilers. <sighs> the way that she's impacted by both of these guys makes sense. I wish that we delved more into why specifically Roth first became interested in Layla, because it does feel a bit insta-lovey on his part, and that's not my favorite thing. So I just wish that there was a bit more substance behind why he liked her so much so quickly. I think we're almost to the end here. I want to talk about some trigger warnings. Again, this book is not intended for younger audiences. It is mature in some of its content and subject matter. There is talks of alcohol, drinking, soul sucking, making out. There is some sexual assault talk, so trigger warning for that. There is people trying to kill one another. There is death. There is violence. It's not super graphic violence, to be clear. Also, if you absolutely hate snakes, just know that one of the familiars is a giant snake. So if that completely freaks you out, just know that that's coming. Possession, as in demonic possession. Obviously, the book premise deals with looking at heaven and hell and God and the devil with the author's own spin on it. So there is some talks of religion. Just know that that's obviously going to be a big part of this book or this series, I should say. Just a fun paranormal supernatural romance type series. I think that the first book is the best. It elicited the most emotional response for me and really just set up the world so well. So I would say that the first book is a five. I really like this one. This is the second book and it's good, but I don't think that it's as good as the first book. I would probably rate this one a four because out of the three books, I would say that the characters made the most stupid choices in this one. So it was just drama for drama's sake and that's just not my jam. But overall, still a very good book. Four stars. Last but not least, Every Last Breath. And this one I would say is probably... It is very close to five stars for me. Probably 4.5. It's not bad. Okay, so this is the book where she finally chooses who she's going to be with. I think what bothered me is how fast she was just like, Yeah, I'm going to pick this guy and now this other guy... Like, I'm just, I'm diving straight in when she'd been so conflicted for so long. So for that reason, I will give this one 4.5 stars out of 5 stars. But really, it's, it's still a very good read. The world building expands even further in this one, which is super awesome. And obviously is up my alley. I'm, I love character driven stories, but I'm big on plot. So I love when world building is expanded in a way that makes sense. It adds to the story that's already been developed instead of taking away. 
And I guess that is it for my first reread review. Overall, I highly recommend this series. I really just like this author's stuff. There is currently ice forming on the windows outside, so it is still super cold. Goodness gracious. But that is it. Thank you for hanging out with me and just chatting about books. This is my favorite thing to do. If you have read this series, comment down below and let me know who your favorite character is and why. Also, let me know if you had a favorite book of the three. Again, my favorite was the first one, which is White Hot Kiss. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for hanging out with me for a little while. Till next time, bye. <laughs>